G'day guys, Dom here. So yeah, we're outside again. Uh, turns out this camera just loves it when it's outside. It actually behaves for once, which is actually uh, fairly nice. And uh, yeah, I've got to head off pretty soon. In like 15 minutes, I've got to go down to the shops and uh, have an epic battle with Optus about a phone bill, which is going to be great. So I figured I might as well get this out of the way because uh, there's like a 50-50 chance I'm going to be pissed off tonight and that's not a good time to do a video. Anyway, uh, that's got nothing to do with the knives. Let's just get stuck right into it. Start off with this one actually because uh, I've done a few of these. This one's a little different because it's got the new blade shape or one of the new optional blade shapes which is the, the Tanto. Yeah, it's not a really defined Tanto, it's not like an American one where it's dead straight. I'm not a huge fan of that. Uh, this is more of a Japanese influence, uh, a lot more subtle. It does still have a point there but you can sharpen that out in like 15 minutes with a, a 1200 grit stone, no problem. A big big to find a front edge just for style points really i like the look of it so i do it it also looks more impressive on a table kind of jumps out a bit more at you this is actually full on acid stone washed reason being this is d2 and d2 performs a little bit better against corrosion with a, an acid stone wash finish because the acid stone wash just kind of seals up all those little pores like in the surface here it'll seal it up just makes it a little bit more rust resistant it's, it'll still rust, but it's not as bad. I'm sure if you're going to go cutting uh, fruits and stuff, you'll get rust, but... Fruit's actually really damn acidic. You can get even AEBL steel, I've seen rust, if you cut a bunch of lemons and stuff and leave it out with a lemon juice on there. Just, it's, it's an acid, that's what it does. The, this definitely gives it a boost, though. And, I mean, the only knives you don't really see rusting too much are either knives without carbon in there, like H1 steel, uh, SM100, but even that's not really a steel and uh, all that sort of stuff, but the typical steels like you see that don't rust, like, uh, well they do rust, but they're hard to rust, like uh, the Victorinox knives and stuff, or the, uh, the Wolstoff knives, they, uh, they've they got so much chromium in there, I'm assuming, I don't know the composition of them, but they just don't, they they don't hold an edge. Typically the steels you see from higher end knives, they will rust, uh, most of them will, if you don't take care of them. But anyway, so yeah, that's that one. Kydex sheath, this one's actually got a really nice tight Kydex sheath, so you can actually use it as a neck knife. It's not falling out, that's just the uh, the thing bouncing against that you're hearing there, that's like the fob. But yeah, no rattle, it's not coming out, rock solid. Nice little sheath. Oh, actually the second one here, I actually came from one of these too. And what I was doing is I was grinding it and I ground it off center, so instead of being in the middle, this tip was about a mil or maybe even two mil off this way, which just made the knife look drunk, which isn't a good look. So uh, what I did was I just busted out the angle grinder and I cut off the front of it. This was all annealed and steel. It was very early in the process. So I cut the front of it and I regrind it into this little guy. So this is just a straight up nasty little point on this. Uh, kind of like a Kiridashi mixed with a, a contender. I did cut the handle down a little bit too. So it's very compact little knife and I'm very happy with how straight I got this edge. I actually tried sharpening this on the disc grinder and that actually worked fairly well. The uh, reason I went with the disc grinder is that a disc grinder doesn't like to wash out like a belt grinder does. A belt grinder, uh, the belt can sort of pucker up around a, an edge or a bit of metal, whatever you're doing. And it sort of convexes it. It'll also, it can also make things wear like wash out, crisp lines. Disc grinder doesn't do that. It also takes a heck of a long time, but it doesn't do that, which is a, uh, that's why I went with that, and it works, no problem. It's just crazy, crazy sharp uh, rock pattern, hologram. Uh, we've got an angled logo on this, which is something I'm really liking. Uh, this is the second time I've done it, and I think I'm going to have to do this standard on all of my sort of Kiridashi style shapes with a, an upswept blade like this, because it just works better. Uh, they used to be like up here somewhere, or they'd be stray, and it just didn't look right. Uh, I'm quite happy with this. So yeah, this is going to go out for leather. The guy who ordered it's in Washington, so that's going to go out for leather, and then I'm going to send it out to him uh, probably in a week or two. So yeah, that's that one. Uh, next up, let's actually do a bit of a, a work in progress, just because I'm really happy with how this came out. So this is probably the most time I've spent grinding a knife recently anyway. This took a very, very long time. So, big blade. First, you'll, we'll do a sneak thing. Actually, we'll do we'll do the uh, the dramatic reveal. We've got some professional video standards here, obviously. Focus, you fuck. 
focus. All right, that's good enough. So yeah, we got a, a swedge on there. Sort of like a, oh, I want to say Japanesey grind, except a lot more. Uh, yeah, Japanese is a word, all right. Uh, just a lot more defined, a lot more of a curve to there. Just tried something out different, and luckily it worked. It was pretty touch and go, but it did work. And then a big harpoon style tip, a swedge up here, sorry. Giant hollow grind, finger choil. Just, uh, I'm really happy with how this grind came out. Took me three hours, just, which is insane. I can grind probably six of these in the time it took me to grind this. But I'm really happy with the results. Uh, this is a DB Custom, so DB Customs are basically where I just get free reign and do whatever the hell I want to kind of blow off steam. And this was a this was fun to grind. It was challenging, but I really like the challenge of a uh, every now and then just doing a really tough grind like this. I'm super thrilled with this. Uh, I want to try a two tone. I'm not quite sure how it's going to go. I have a feeling it's it might not go so well. So fingers crossed I don't fuck it up. But yeah, we'll see. I'm just really I'm really happy with how that grind came out. Now, the big challenge with these is trying to get everything even and symmetrical, so I had to go through it with calipers and everything just to measure it all. Kept them going back to the, the fine grits and tweaking it. It's the issue with these big uh, compound grinds like this. So I glued these up last night. So these are Cam's Micarta, OD green and black. So this with copper pins, I reckon that's going to look really nice. And I actually really want this to be my, uh, my centerpiece at the Sydney Knife Show coming up. Only thing is, I don't have any copper pins, and I only have really small bits of kydex left for, like, these kind of sheaths. So, uh, hopefully my stuff rocks up. I did put an order in this morning, so if that rocks up today, not today, uh, Monday or Tuesday, I could hopefully get this done. I am flying out Friday morning, so I've only really got two days, three days to finish it, so... I don't know, I might just drink a shitload of Red Bull and pull an all-nighter, we'll see. But yeah, that's uh, that's that's in the works. I think that's going to be a really nice little knife. Or well, not little, that's a bit of a monster consider it compared to the stuff I usually make. If it doesn't sell at Sydney, or if I don't get it up at time in Sydney, it's going to be the website. Anyway, so that's that one. Last but definitely not least, we have these two. So you would have seen them in the, uh, the build video I did on Wednesday, or Tuesday, one of those days. So these are my new harpy design. And these are just sort of a big, big Warn uh, what is it, Warncliffe, that's what I wanted to say, big Warncliffe. Uh, I've always wanted to have a big Warncliffe design. It's something that I, it's been missing from my lineup for quite a while, and I've always wanted to do it. I've got, I've got drawings of this knife in different stages going back three years, and I finally got around to doing it. And actually, if you look at my knife making fail video from a couple weeks ago, this was the knife I was trying to make. Uh, it didn't go so well, if you've seen the video, I kind of royally screwed it up. Uh, what happened was I was doing this in 01 and uh, it got a huge warp in like this and with 01 you can actually, you uh, straight after the quench you've got about a couple of minutes to sort of straighten it out in the arbor press and it was such a bad warp I took a little bit too long and I sheared it clean through the middle but uh, we got a knife out of it, got a video out of it and a few weeks later I made these. Uh, these are A2, I, I much prefer A2 than 01, uh, it's a little bit more rust resistant uh, you definitely notice it when you're etching it, it takes almost twice as long to actually get anything to happen. It also, it's slightly better in wear resistance that I've found. And it's an air quench steel, which is the biggest thing, because air quench steels are the tits. Oh, well, like oil quench steels and water quench steels, they're an absolute nightmare when it comes to warping and stuff compared to an air quench steel. Like a steel like this, you can just heat treat it, put it between plates, and most of the time it's flat. Not all the time, there's always weird stuff, but it's a lot more easy to heat treat. It also requires some pretty sophisticated equipment to do, but you can't forge it as well, which is an issue, but I don't forge, so I don't really care about that. So yeah, I just did two of these, uh, different blade finishes on these. This is the ad, the antique rad poisoning patina, so it looks a lot more smashed up, a lot more worn, like more of a post-apocalyptic fallout-y kind of fucked up kind of look. This one, sort of the same kind of a deal, but that's more like a disease. So the, uh, the camera's not picking it up but it's got a lot of depth to it that you just don't get in camera. So you can compare the two of them. Darker, more blotchy, I guess, more depth. 
to more smashed up and apocalyptic looking. Handles are just uh, shadow box, just because I uh, felt like it. And this one here has actually got this really cool pattern I was messing around with. It was a bit of an accident, but I quite like that. Yeah, more of like a bamboo kind of a thing. Just angled stuff. Um, just really messing around with a belt grinder, trying new things, having fun in the workshop, really. And this one is uh, just a stressed hardware, same kind of a deal. So yeah, I've got one more of these that I still have to finish off. I don't know when I'm going to do that. I do have a lot more knives that I have that have priority over that. A lot of knife, people have been waiting a while that I have to get to their knives at some point. Uh, most of those knives are off at like heat treat or um, at leather, so there's not much I can do about that to speed it up, but I do have a bunch of knives to do. Anyway, so uh, yeah, that's about it. Hope you guys enjoy the video. And there is a build video coming out, hopefully next week. Uh, fingers crossed that's going to happen. Uh, there's, a, there's a one or two things that I'm a little iffy about, but I'm sure I can get it done. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoy it. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one.